Now that you have a good introduction to family Ursidae, I want to move on to another family of caniforms. Many years ago, it was considered a mark of wealth for a woman to own and wear mink. What is mink? Well, a mink is a little ferret-like creature with unusually soft fur. It belongs in the family Mastillidae, which is also called the weasel family. These carnivores are considered more dog-like than cat-like, though they are very different from either dogs or cats. Minks have soft fur that is highly prized by hunters. Picture here is a mink. Most of the members of the family Mastillidae are blessed with luxuriously soft fur making them a favorite among hunters. For hundreds of years, people in the cold climates have longed for their coats. God created many different kinds of mustelids, including badgers, wolverines, otters, martens, ferrets and weasels. In fact, the family name comes from the Latin word mustella, which means weasel. In this picture you can see a weasel. They are all part of the same family because they are similar in many aspects. However, there are many differences as well. For example, many of these mustelids live and hunt in different ways. Badgers dig holes and burrow under the ground while martens live in trees. Otters spend most of their time in the water while minks only spend part of their day swimming. This is a picture of a badger. So, why are these creatures all part of the same family? Well, despite their differences, they also have many things in common, like a big stink. Mustelids have scent glands that reek of strong and distasteful odor. Many mustelids use their scent glands when threatened. They turn their behind to the enemy, raise their tail and spray noxious liquid at the offending creature. Some mustelids even scream or stand on their front paws while doing this. Sounds like the behavior of skunks, doesn't it? Well, at one time, skunks were considered mustelids because of this very fact. Skunks are no longer considered mustelids. They are now in their own family, but we'll discuss them later. Mastelids have short legs and long bodies, though some, like the badger you've seen and the wolverine pictured here, have a wider body than others. Also, most mastelids, except otters and badgers, are loners. They don't run in packs unless they are mating and raising young. But unlike bears, mastelids are primarily carnivores always on the hunt for a small animal. Like children, otters love to play. They scamper about on their webbed feet, frolicking in and out of the water, playing chase or tug of war with fellow otters. There are many different species of otters and they can be found in rivers, streams and oceans all over the world. They typically, typically feast on aquatic animals like fish, clams and crabs. They return to land only to rest, their small, rest in their small homes, which is called a halt. And this concludes the mustelids. Poor skunks have their own nasty smell. Scientists used to classify them in the family mustelidae. However, one scientist compared skunk genes to other mustelid genes, they noticed that skunks had too many genetic differences to put them in the same family as otters and minks. So they have now moved the skunks into their own family, Mephitidae. This family name makes sense since the Latin word mephit means foul odor.
Although skunks are usually black and white, some skunks are brown or grey, and a few are cream coloured. All skunks are striped. They may have a single thick stripe around the, across their back and tail, or two thinner stripes instead of one. Even the spotted skunk has a series of broken white stripes that make it look more spotted than striped. Skunks feel threatened, they can spray their noxious stinky spray up to 20 feet away. They warn their victims first by hissing and or stamping their feet. One kind of skunk, the spotted skunk, will raise itself into a handstand and walk towards you with its hind legs in the air. The goo in their spray contains several chemicals, some of which can actually cause temporary blindness if it gets in your eyes. Their smell is so powerful that it can be detected by humans over a mile away. So if you ever spot a skunk with its back to you and see it stamping its feet, run away as fast as you can. They are mischievous, they are crafty, the rascally raccoon has long been a neighbour to folks living in the new world. Even though raccoons have been hunted since the days of old, they still dwell in abundance in many parts of North and South America, from Southern Canada to North Argentina. Raccoons make up the genus Procyon of the family Procyondae. Animals in this family have medium and long tails, most of which are ringed. They have five toes on each foot and are plantigrades, which is important to know if you're looking for their tracks. There are three main, three main species of raccoon. The common northern raccoon, the crab-eating raccoon, and the casumal raccoon. The name raccoon comes from the Native American word a raccoon, which means he scratches with his hands. Raccoons have five digits on each paw, and they use their front paws or hands with amazing dexterity. So you see, people aren't the only creatures that God created with hands that can do fine work. Raccoons also have hand-like paws as do primates, like monkeys, which we'll learn about in another lesson. Raccoons walk like bears, but only grow to be the size of a small dog. They prefer to live in trees and are easily recognized by the black fur that lines their eyes, making them look like some kind of bandit. It seems that God had a sense of humor when he placed that banded mask across the raccoon's eyes because these animals are notorious for stealing things. Of course, raccoons aren't the only members of the family Procyonidae. The South American coyote is found from the southern United States to northern Argentina. It looks like an orange raccoon with a dog-like head. The King Uraju and Ulingo live in Central and South America. These two members of the family have unusually long tails, and the King Kayaju can actually use its tail to grasp things like the branch of a tree. Scientists call this kind of tail prehensile. And then they also have an Asian member, the Red Panda. It can be found in many parts of Southeast Asia, but is generally associated with China. It is not a bear, but like the panda bear, it eats bamboo. It also eats berries, flowers, leaves, and bird eggs. There is another thing that, two cute, that these two cute animals have in common, a thumb. Like the panda bear, the red panda has an extended wrist bone it can use, like a thumb, to strip branches from bamboo shoots. Unlike the panda bear, however, it has the ring tail and face markings of a raccoon.
Uh, th 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 that's all, folks.